Personal trainer and strength and conditioning coach Craig Graham seeks to provide accessibility for new and fresh ways to train, specifically for those with a disability. Based in Essex, Craig developed alt movement, alternative movement, exercise for individuals with disabilities. On Instagram, you can follow Craig and some of the individuals he works with to see their progress through training in an alternative way. So let's just start at the beginning, shall we? Cool. Uh, <laughs> how long have you been a personal trainer? And what's the story with that? How did you get into this in the first place? Okay, so I mean, I've been a personal trainer for 10 years now, 10 years plus. I started back in 2011. Um, I don't think I really took the standard way of becoming like a PT or getting into fitness itself because I was never really a sporty person in school. Um, I never really like got on with team games or, you know, like football or soccer or rugby or anything like that. I didn't really, uh, really partake. I didn't feel like I fit in very well. So I didn't feel like fitness or sports was really for me. Um, being super tall as well, I always felt a bit silly running around. I was, I'm six five, so uh, and at that age when I was in school, I was very sort of slim, skinny, um, felt very dangly. Uh, and I remember someone made a comment once about me looking like Mr. Bean as I was running, and uh, that always stuck in my mind. So I was like, I'm never playing sports, I'm never getting into fitness. Um, yeah, and uh, it wasn't until I started training with a family member, my uncle, and um, he sort of uh, was guiding me a little bit and he was showing me the ropes, sort of like training. Uh, we went to his garage and we'd do like, um, you know, sort of garage workouts and he'd show me a few exercises. Um, and I also started studying um, some martial arts with him as well. Um, on a surface level, just going to his club that he trained at. And, uh, and I thought, look, this is something I can do. This is something I never felt comfortable doing at school. But then going on to doing this, I felt I enjoyed it. It made me feel comfortable. I started to feel strong. I didn't feel like that dangly, um, uncoordinated teenager anymore. And um, yeah, I sort of really sort of um, fell into it. Um, after this, yes, yeah, so I obviously I left school and I went on to um, uh, into getting a job. Like, you know, you sort of, uh, sort of leave school, get a job and that's it, start getting into the real world. And um, I was working on a construction site, but at the same time I was, uh, I was still sort of training with my uncle every now and then. And uh, I just remember one day I was sitting um, by the river, by the River Thames in London. And uh, I just thought, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I feel like I've got more to offer than, not, not that I'm discrediting anyone that works in any other jobs, um, but I just felt like personally, I had more to offer than, than what I was doing. And uh, I remember that day I made that decision, I was going to uh, become a personal trainer. Um, I went home, uh, I discussed it with my parents at the time, because I still live with my parents. And uh, then, I, yeah, I booked onto a course. I went in, uh, left my job. Uh, and went and went and took a PT course. Like a, it was like an, uh, an intensive one, so it was like a shorter, condensed one. Yeah. And uh, once I passed that, um, I got a job in a local gym, uh, in a college gym. So I was working like alongside like students and stuff, doing inductions, you know, the basic sort of things, showing people how to use machines, um, just basic programming, running a couple of classes, um, and that was for the general pop, uh, general public. Um, mm -hmm. So no specifics or specialists, um, but specialists in what I was doing. Uh, but yeah, as I say, I was I was enjoying that. I started to enjoy it, started to build my knowledge. Uh, I really enjoyed working with people. I found that in doing so, I became a better communicator. I became more confident, obviously training more. I built my confidence. Um, and then, yeah, after this, um, I just, I just, yeah, I just started to build, build my career. I started taking on to one-to-one -one clients. Um, I've now left that, obviously I've left that, um, the college gym, but um, I went on to, uh, like being more like self-employed as opposed to being employed at a gym yeah so I sort of bounced around a few places sort of trying to find my foot in and uh yeah and 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 now I'm like a self-employed personal trainer um, and right. that's, that's that's what I do that's how I found that's how I found myself really short story short story I could go a lot more into detail but I think that sort of sums it up pretty well Well, yeah certainly I mean just you know how you say it, just finding more and more confidence along the way um, and like you say, not just like physically, but also, you know, it, with your communication and these kinds of things. So, yeah. And I think that really sort of like, I, I had to go through that process in order to find who I wanted to work with sort of later down the line. Oh. Um, and it sort of, yeah, refined my, um, my niche, so to speak. Well, uh, so what, so what was it? So you go from being a personal 
trainer. Yeah, and yeah so just once, one to ones with, as I say, general general public. Um, right. right. At the time, anyone that would employ me, anyone would, would, would work with me. That's sort right. of what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. Right. So so going from that, and mm -hmm. then you create alt movement. When did this begin, and, and what was your motivation? Yeah. So alt movement is it, it, it's naturally developed. So. It's, I'm trying to really pinpoint a point in my life that it sort of started to happen. But if I was going to say it was, uh, I was given the opportunity to work in a college, um, sort of about 40 minutes from where I live. It was a, a college and it was running like a special needs group um, for kids with like Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, autism, a multitude of other things. And uh, and there was another, another place a little bit more local that I was offered this through the same sort of company. And uh, at the time I was, I was, yeah. I was very scared. I was like, oh my God, like I've worked with people like without disabilities, that's absolutely fine. But then I thought, am I gonna be, am I gonna be good at this? Am I gonna be good enough? Am I gonna be able to work with these guys? What if I hurt someone? What if I don't know what I'm doing? What if I mess up? And uh, all these things were going through my mind, but I've always been a person that's, um, I've always liked to jump into the deep end and sort of get stuck into things and be out of my comfort zone. So I thought, you know what? I'll give this a go. Worst case scenario, I go to it, I don't enjoy it, then I just, you know, I'll leave it there. And uh, I remember the day I went into the college, super nervous, like I was walking into the class and there was this group of kids and I was like, oh my God, right, I've got to work with these, like I've got to really think outside the box. And I just found it, the second I got in there, I started to get warmed up with them and I just found it flowed really naturally. And it just, I don't know, I just, I felt like I could communicate with them really well. Um, obviously there's very vari vari variant levels of, um, communication between them obviously with autism and different um different conditions it was the communication was a big big issue but there was there was carers there to take care of that anyway and they're one-to-ones that was um that was with them so yeah yeah so i run the class um really enjoyed it uh and i remember just coming out that day sitting in my car and just thinking wow like it just completely changed my perspective on life and it was like all the little things in life that I used to get the ump about, like that, I don't know, uh, my alarm didn't go off, I woke up a bit late or I got a flat tire or I spilled some coffee. I used to think, oh my God, this is the end of the world. What have I done? Like, this is really throwing my day off. And then, um, and it just put all that into perspective. And I'm like, these kids have got the world against them and they're having fun. They're laughing, they're joking. They're, they're just really getting stuck in to all the activities. And like, they're not complaining at all. And I think from that day I came away and I thought this this is this is what I want to do. This is the group of people I want to work with. And uh, obviously, yeah, I continued working there for a little while. And um, yeah, and then it sort of was a natural progression after that. So alt movement, the, the the concept sort of was born before the name, if that makes sense. So um, it was sort of happening naturally. And then it wasn't until recent recent I've sort of. Uh, sort of was really thinking about what I was doing and then that name popped to mind like what am I doing I'm giving people an alternative way to train an alternative way to move and then it sort of progressed and all movement and I was like wow okay yeah and you know you have that moment I suppose you did when you set up your um with, with, with what you do you had that that moment where it just clicked and you was like yeah that's it mm -hmm. this is what I want to do this is how I've got to do it and I know my vision mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's awesome um but I, so yeah and, and what you're saying what you just shared you know here there's these kids dealing with so much and not once complaining but just really yeah. being present and appreciating yeah. what a gift that perspective living in the moment not thinking about any worries at home yeah. not thinking about anything in the future like they was just there living in the moment enjoying it and, and it was so humbling and it really did it like I, I, I don't get emotional or cry but i came away very emotional that day i remember very very emotional right right that's beautiful that that's mm. when you just knew that oh it was, it was awesome, awesome. Yeah, that those are the people that you want to be with, that you want to mm -hmm. work with. Um, in, so, so what has been the most rewarding part thus far in your work with Alt Movement? Well, I mean, there's there's so many, so many things that are rewarding. It's, that's the thing. This this the beauty of this. It's got so many different avenues to develop as what it is Alt Movement, and also it's got so many different facets to what what I can offer, not just the kids or the people I work with, but their families too. Um, I think that's the most most rewarding thing is seeing them progress. And obviously with their conditions, uh, some of them are not necessarily regressive. However, if 
like for example with cerebral palsy it's not a regressive condition however it's like anyone if, if we sat about all day and didn't exercise it would get worse and and with these un uh, individuals unfortunately it's a lot more noticeable and it happens a lot more quickly um, in their regression, um, not just in the tightness of the muscle, but in the weakening of the muscles as well. So you do see a real big sort of, uh, a real big dip in, in, their, in their regression if they don't stay active. Um, so it's, it's it's super important to, to me, to be able to offer that to them and, and show them that they can, they can still progress and get better and become stronger um, not just in themselves, like physically, but mentally as well, just changing their perspective on life. So I think I think definitely we've, we're benefiting one another. Um, and it's the families as well. It's, it's also when I get like text messages, like with, with Jay, who I work with, obviously, as we've mentioned before, Jay um, was one of my first clients, actually, um, like first one-to-ones. Um, so obviously, uh, Jay's got cerebral palsy. Uh, his mum contacted me and wanted to work with him. And... Uh, yeah, and that, uh, since that day, just seeing his whole family progress, I now work with, he's got a, t he's got a twin brother, and um, I work with his twin brother. I'm actually training him to be a coach as well. Um, I teach personal training courses also, so um, I'm teaching him to be a coach, and it's like changing his life, his brother's life, his mum's life, and just the whole family. So I think definitely that's, that's the most rewarding thing for me. And um, other people seeing it as well, like not just people with disabilities, but other people that follow me are watching his journey, and they're sort of like coming up to me in day to day and going, like, same thing as me I'm complaining about stuff that doesn't even matter and this kid's getting on with it and he's enjoying life mm -hmm. that is awesome and, and you're right because it is this ripple effect right yeah wow. absolutely and that's, that's that's the thing I love about it it's not just I didn't really realize how many people I was impacting until I created this page or movement and and I started putting it out and I had so many messages come through and I was like wow and I've, I've, I've had people from the states contact me as well not just yourself but I've had uh, other people contacting me asking me for advice and I've actually got a meeting on Monday with a guy from uh, from New York actually he's a uh, he's at a a spinal injury and he wants to have a chat about some advice i was like oh my god love I'm, I'm going global i'm affecting people and across the world so yeah i mean not that i want to be famous or anything or, or like be a massive influencer or something like that i just you know it's just very humbling that i'm able to help more people on a bigger scale yeah yeah no for sure um you know so so where do you hope that alt movement goes where, where do you want this to to end up I mean, I don't really know. I think because it's because it's progressed so naturally and it's not like I've had to force it or sit down and brainstorm about these ideas and anything. It's just happened so natural and it's evolved on its own. And I think that's the beauty of it. I've not really got a clear vision of, yeah. right, okay, by the six months, I want to be here. By a year's time, I want to be here. I think I'm just I'm just going to let it evolve and it's, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, obviously, I wanted to help people. Um, yeah, it's really tough. I can't, I can't really give you a, a straight answer for that one. I want it to I want it to evolve and help as many people across the planet as possible, obviously. And uh, yeah, yeah. not just with my one-to-ones, but online as well and inspire people, inspire those that are disabled, those that are not disabled. Um, yeah, I've, I, I, yeah, so I can't really give you a clear vision, but yeah, that's that the it's, got, it's got the ability to evolve and adapt just like these individuals have. Yes, yes. So it's sort of a mere reflection of the possibility, right? Exactly, exactly. The possibilities are endless. It's, it's, it's what you want it to be sort of thing that is fantastic um what is it that you hope to inspire with this with your work um in those with disabilities and those mm -hmm. without disabilities yeah i think it's the same sort of thing it's like um i want them to realize that there is i feel i feel like some people have been let down a little bit from what i've seen what i've personally seen when doing my research in what options are available out there for them. And a lot of them have got to the point where they've almost not, they've almost given up and they've almost accepted their disability as, as a disability and uh, that they can't, there's no progression beyond that point, um, which is obviously one of the reasons I thought that this would be a great idea. Um, so it's just to let them know that there is, there is an alternative method out there. There is a way that you can train Fair enough, it might not be in the same way as other people can, like those without disabilities can, but you'll just have to do it in an alternative way. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, for people without disabilities, um, mm -hmm. because again, it's this ripple effect, you know, um, and when it comes to disability, it affects not only the individual, but like you're mm -hmm. saying, the family, um, the friends, the people who are outside, the complete strangers who are just looking and seeing, 
Um, what is it that you want to communicate to people who, who are not living with a disability about the work that you're doing? Yeah, I guess it's, uh, as I said, I like, I like the fact that people are seeing the people I work with and it's sort of, uh, it's removing them barriers. I don't want to use the, the word excuse, that seems a bit flippant, but it's removing the barriers of what they perceive their, um, their barriers to be, essentially. And it's removing them so they sort of, <laughs> they drop their excuses, they're like, right, okay, if this guy can do it, if this if this girl can do it, then then really, what is stopping me? I've, I've got nothing, nothing holding me back. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, and, and that's, that's, yeah, definitely that's what I'll say it is. That's awesome. Well, and, and also to take take that because there is um, sort of a, a concept in people's mind that it's hard to communicate with people with disabilities, and I've seen it through some of my clients, and they would, I would see people talk through them through someone else, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. And yeah. it's just about having that that time, that time to take for these individuals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, what you're doing is is incredible, and I love you know because there are many people who who live with a disability who it, it's very standardized what they need. Mm-hmm. To do. Well, these are the exercises; these are the way to do them. But for you to come in and say, "Hey, let me give you something fresh, give you something new," um, I think it's it's so needed um, by so Absolutely. many. And so, thank you for the work that you're doing. And uh, we wish you all the best in in the work uh, that you just so passionately committed yourself to. And um, thank you for helping us all become a bit more aware now. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you having me on.